Welcome to the Vegan Pulse, the podcast where compassionate individuals from around the globe share their personal journeys into veganism and discuss their ongoing efforts to promote this ethical lifestyle with your host, Nancy Arenas. Welcome to the Vegan Pulse, the podcast that brings you stories from individuals worldwide about their journey into veganism and their current efforts to promote this ethical lifestyle. My name is Nancy Arenas. I am your host, and my guest today is Michael Prickreel. Michael, also known as Piano Mike, is a multifaceted artist with international presence. He was born in the Czech Republic and raised in Southern Germany. Michael's music defies genre boundaries, blending elements of art rock, progressive, pop, jazz, and blues. He is also a public and motivational speaker who engages audiences on diverse topics, including veganism, spirituality, motivation, vegan travel, relationships, and communication. Michael also serves as the regional organizer for Anonymous for the Voiceless. And additionally, he shares his insights as a contributor and talk show host on On Chain TV. Stick around. I want to introduce him to you three. Hi, Michael. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Nancy. How are you? Okay. Um, Tell our viewers where you're from right now and um, how is it there in the vegan movement? So I'm currently based in the Czech Republic for most of the time. Sometimes I travel to the United States, uh, West Coast, and stay there for several months. So right now, yeah, in the Czech Republic, veganism is pretty strong, especially in the last few years. It's been getting stronger, lots more activism, and also more and more vegan products. It's unfortunately still not as good as in Germany in terms of the products. But as far as restaurants go, uh, Prague is on the top of the list in Europe with over 50 vegan restaurants. Wow, that is awesome. That is so awesome. Now, can you tell me what inspired you to go vegan and how it has affected your life? So it's been a long story, but I'll try to make it short. Uh, I've actually had uh, some vegan friends from, from already from early on in the early 2000s. And so I was always impressed about the vegan food they were already making. Like back then, I remember a New York cheesecake in vegan version. That was absolutely the best cheesecake I've ever had. And um, then later, uh, about eight years ago, uh, eight or nine years ago, uh, a really good friend of mine who was vegetarian at the time and also went vegan like a few months before I went vegan, inspired me. We started talking about this and then I watched Earthlings and that evening i stopped eating meat right away and a few months later i went vegan fully uh, especially after watching gary rovsky's best speech yeah he's one of my heroes i love him (laughs) yeah mine too i like the fact that he's straight to the point no apologies here's the truth like it or not this is what it is he speaks up for the animals as if he wanted to be spoken up for if he was in the in their position and that's i think that's what all of us should do exactly now tell me how do you use your music uh to raise awareness about animal rights and veganism so i i wrote five vegan songs by now in the last three four years I got inspired to do this because, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big music aficionado, you could say, and I remember Life 8 back in 1985, which was a huge concert uh, for an, an USA for Africa, which actually on some level helped the cause back then, and even politicians started considering uh, the issue. and. So I thought, okay, this this can work for veganism too. So it's of course it's about promoting the songs and and all that. So I wrote songs with a strong message, and I hope to spread the message uh, this way. 
that that is so so great when people have their own talents and then they just like just come in and mix their veganism advocacy in it to just you know further the course cause absolutely because uh music and all art can move mountains i mean we you know it, it goes it touches our emotions and so this is where we want to sort of get started with with the emotions of people because that, that's when the biggest change occurs i truly believe it um whether it's song or art prints or you know drawings posters whatever i think that those are like you said they connect people just art connects people no matter what language no matter what ethnicity what religion you know it just speaks to you absolutely so tell me so you are you're also a motivational speaker so you talk about veganism spirituality and a couple of other um topics tell me about that yes yes so here and there i speak at veg fests or or any other events uh and uh, with Focusing on topics now also on spirituality, because it's, that's important also for the vegan community to, you know, to, to be strong, to stay strong, to not burn out. Uh, focusing also on communication. I've done a talk uh, at VCOP about communication and, and also uh, traveling because I'm a travel traveler uh sort of a perpetual traveler and i used to live in southern oregon california florida canada so you know how you can utilize all the resources that we have currently which which are really easy compared to to several decades ago how you can utilize those for an easy experience when you're traveling that is great. Um, and you're also um, a contributor to Unchained TV. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I do lives for Unchained TV. Uh, the last one I did was from the AV United Cube in Prague, just um, May 4th this year. And, and, it, and it's, it's great. It's great to wor work for Jane. And, uh, and she's one of my heroes. What she does is, is truly amazing. What she built up this uh, network about uh, about vegan vegan news. And, absolutely, absolutely. And the app is great. So yeah. Right. So um, tell me, what advice would you give to aspiring vegan advocates? You know, those people like yourself who want to make a difference. Right. Well, I think one of the most important things is, is to stay effective. So kind of work out a strategy, not just blindly say, oh, everything works and, and then just go whatever you think it works, but already see where there's a track record, what works, and, and if it aligns with your way of doing activism, then do that or try something new uh, and, you know, see if it works, obviously, because we, we, we have no time to waste on, on just trying things. We actually want to do it as effect as effectively as possible. Most most certainly. Um, so what what are your current? I, I know that you're also um, organizer or uh, area director for Anonymous for the Voiceless. How yes. how do people react to that when you go out there? Yeah, uh, so we get a lot of positive reactions actually. You know, we occasionally we get some trolls or, or people that are just close-minded and uh, the trick is that we we figured this out a few years ago and then we put this into our outreach protocol is to not talk to not even talk to the trolls to not waste time on the trolls but focus on the open-minded people and with those we get really tremendous reactions like some people go vegan on the spot Mm -hmm. Some people really let out their emotions. Some people are sort of convinced, right? I mean, they convince themselves during during the conversation, but they may need some time to think about it. 
lot of people that walk by and, and even though personally they might not go vegan, but they applaud us for being out there for what we're doing. So it's been more and more positive. And, and the amount of close-minded people is actually getting less and less. I, I think to agree, I, I agree. Um, because what I see is the same thing, that there's more and more people opening their curiosity at least to saying, hmm, you know, maybe this isn't just a trend. Maybe I should look right. at it a little bit um, and things like that, you know. Um, is that what you find? Yeah. Yeah. Even in, in, in smaller cities, like the city I live in, all mm -hmm. of Oates, Czech Republic, which is two and a half train hours east of Prague and north of Vienna. Mm -hmm. It's even though it's a university town, once you get out there, uh, outside the city, you, you get a lot of people from the countryside. But even in this city, we, we get more open people now these days. And then we're waiting for, we used to have two raw vegan restaurants and then another vegan restaurant, they closed. Now we're hoping soon uh, a, a vegan chain restaurant will open here in this town. It's called Four Keys. And it's been, it's been successful over the, all over the country. It's partially fast food, but partially also slow food. So like really healthy bowls and things like that. Okay. Let me ask you a question now in your day-to-day -day life, right? Um, and what you do day-to-day. -day. Um, you um, are a web designer. Is that what you are? Correct. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. How do people contact you and, and what kind of services you offer? Kind of, cause, so, you know, vegans are always looking to connect yeah. with other like-minded individuals and in what they're doing. I know I am. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, I've been doing web design, believe it or not, for over 20 years. I got into it sort of as a, in German, we would say quer Einsteiger, sort of a side, side tracking thing. I studied English and communications, but my dad used to be a software engineer. And so that's how I got into computers. I'm not the big programmer, but I know, I know front end very well. So I do WordPress websites. I know a little bit of PHP, so I can maneuver very well there. Uh, I also do search engine optimization and Google ads. So pretty much the whole package, actually, when you need a website, you can get the full package, you know, including uh, consulting and then also, you know, after the fact maintenance and things like that. And and even even a little bit, some small graphic design things too. Okay, well, that's good to know. Like I said, you know, I know as a vegan, I would rather go to another vegan uh, with yeah. a service. So I like to promote other people who are vegan and their services because why hire someone else? Why not hire someone who is in line with our view of what the world should be, a kind of world? Exactly. And I've already had a couple of vegan clients, which... I'd rather prefer that too, because then you don't have to deal with the carnist aspects of certain things, because that can get kind of tricky sometimes. Okay. Well, um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Michael. And if you like, so to, much. <laughs> and if you like to leave us with some inspirational words, <laughs> I would love that. Inspirational words. Uh, <laughs> motivational uh, inspirational get out there yeah so well i mean that's that's the key word getting out there our movement is relatively speaking so small compared to any other social justice or any other movement that fights injustice that we r literally we need every single voice i i always say if every vegan would speak up for the animals we'd have a vegan world in no time. So, you know, I understand you you love collecting recipes. Lots of people love collecting recipes and sharing products. But like to me personally, that's secondary. If I can get, get by without the vegan cake, without the vegan ice cream, I'd rather do that and, and speak up for the animals because they need us most. They have no other movement. While human injustices have so many voices, so 
get out there, become active. And um, so I, I totally agree. I mean, I think that veganism is a social justice movement because it has so many different parts to it um, that includes humans and your health and the climate. But mainly it's about, you know, stopping the oppression, the torture yes. and the suffering that has been allowed for so long of the animals who only have our voices. So like you said, it's great yeah. to have a vegan recipe, but you know, it's, it's more great if that's a thing, or it's greater to say, hey, do you know that chickens sing to their babies? When yeah. they're, you know, in the nest or whatever, or, it, or it's the, the ducks, they pluck out their own feathers to kind of cushion the nest where they're going to lay their eggs and then they kind of hum to the babies. So, in other words, connecting and letting people see animals have these feelings and these emotions, just like us, just like a cat, just like a dog, um, yeah. and that we need to kind of raise that up so that people think twice about what they're doing when they're saying, I'm going to have bacon and, you know, instead think, oh man, she's a mother or it, it, that baby, it's a baby, you know, um, that kind of connect the emotion to the animals. Absolutely. And, and using the, the correct language. So avoiding all these euphemisms, including he or she and not it for for that so because subconsciously it makes makes a big difference when when we normalize peace again so unnormalize the violence normalize peace the language actually will help with us by saying that hey this is this is vegan cheese it's not it's not fake cheese it's vegan cheese it's a vegan version of meat or so that those kind of things, no substitute. Right. It's not an alternative. It's not an alternative. Alternative to to most people sounds like, oh my gosh, I don't want to get into that. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone. So we don't want to use these words. We just want to use vegan version, cruelty free, cruelty free cheese, or something like that. Exactly. I th think that is that is most important. Well, again, thank you, Michael, for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you for having me on the show. I'll stay in touch. I'll share your information and um, I'll send you a clip once it's done. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Vegan Pulse. Remember, you have a pulse. Therefore, you have a purpose. The Vegan. Thank you for joining us on Vegan Pulse, where we've shared remarkable journeys and ongoing efforts of compassionate individuals worldwide. These stories inspire and empower, urging you to embrace a vegan lifestyle and contribute to a more compassionate, sustainable world. Remember, your choices matter and together we propel the vegan movement forward. Keep advocating, making a positive impact, and pulsing with compassion. Until next time.